All right, guys. Surprise again. I'm just full of surprises lately. I'm doing the beginning as the one later tonight. I was able to have a f hour and a just enough time to watch this movie before I'm having a family barbecue and stuff. So who knows what shape I'll be in later. <laughs> Happy Labor Day to everybody. But figured I'd do this one first just because I, I don't like it <laughs> like much at all. I only think I saw this twice, maybe. I think it went up a little bit last time, but it's not a good movie at all. Uh, this isn't my series. Like, some of you know that. Like, the first movie's just a cult classic masterpiece of horror. The second one's my favorite in the series. The third one has good atmosphere, but that's kind of it for me. It's forgettable. And the remake's phenomenal. That's it. Like, I don't like any of these, like, movies. The beginning has some good stuff because Arlie Army and the characters are better and you can relate to them a little bit more than the people in this. Like, I, the main girl, Alexandra Daddario, if I'm right. She's been in other stuff. But she does a good job. There's no terrible acting in this. But it's just the story sucks. Like, it really does. So let's talk Texas Chainsaw 3D from 2013. In 3D. Put on your glasses now. Also, anyone who hasn't seen this short synopsis... This is a direct sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So none of the events of any of the other films have happened. And there's a lot of dumbass shit in here that contradicts all of that. This series is another reason I'm not a big fan of it. it the continuity is abysmal throughout this whole franchise. What do we have, like five timelines now? Like, same with Halloween. But this movie, direct sequel, and they end up going to the sheriff or whatever, goes to the house of the Sawyers and tries to get Leatherface. And then this woman who gets an inheritance of this house ends up going there and with her friends and meeting Leatherface, and they proceed to get picked off one by one, like every slasher ever. All right, so just from the beginning here, it's the best part of the movie because you got like a three-minute reminder, just in case anyone never saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in their life, and they went in to see Texas Chainsaw 3D, they give you a nice little recap, like a Friday film. That's the best part of this movie, really. <laughs> it's just the footage from the original movie. Now, the opening scene, when the sheriff gets to the house, is good. Like, it's not bad. And you have Bill Moseley here, <laughs> who's phenomenal at everything, is playing Drayton Sawyer. So we... we it, that works. Uh, then they have a shootout and stuff because the sheriff's saying, we need the boy. We need Leatherface. They're not giving him up. And then they end up having to shoot out with the cops. Who the hell are all these people in the house? Like, this is what I mean with this movie. Like, it's supposed to be a direct sequel. You had the hitchhiker in the first movie. He's dead. You had Grandpa, who's <laughs> kind of dead, but he's not really dead somehow. And then you had Drayton and Leatherface. That's it. Now there's like eight people in the house, and like, where the hell did they come from? We've never seen them before. There's a baby, too. Like, none of this is good or makes sense at all. Uh, then they say they're going to send the Leatherface out, the boy out, and all these vigilante mob people, like, in the town come and throw Molotov cocktails and burn the place to the ground. So they think they killed them all. But where did all those people come from? Nobody thought of this. Like, no one on this film set, I say this all the time, nobody looked and said, wait, like, who are all these people? Like, this is supposedly happening, like, a few hours or maybe an hour or so after Sally is, uh, goes to the sheriff and says what happened. Because you hear that in the very beginning of the movie. You hear her saying what happened, and then this guy supposedly goes right to the Sawyer house. Where do all these people come from? Who are they? <laughs> God, all of this, this is just the beginning of this stupid shit. That's right. Isn't the baby... No, because the guy rescues the baby. Isn't That's who the main character, the girl, is who gets the inheritance of the house, right? Because then it's... The whole premise for this movie is built off of bullshit. Because she never existed with this family before. So all of this premise, it makes no sense at all. Cool that they use the picture... You know, the flash sound going off here, just like in the original. They're all taking pictures, like the vigilante mob. <laughs> they're holding up the chainsaw. They're holding up a leg, and they're taking pictures of all this because they all burnt the house to the ground. Cool, but it's ridiculous. Just for the reason alone, like, out of fear of being caught, 
for like burning down a house and murdering people and stuff like that? Like, wouldn't you not want to be in a picture holding a severed foot? Heather's the main girl. She works at a, slicing meat at a grocery store, like as a <laughs> not a butcher, but like pretty much. Come on, really? What are the plot convenient chances <laughs> that this girl who came from Leatherface's family and stuff like that now she's working with meat? I'm like, <laughs> it's a little on the nose. So she's dating this guy, uh, what the hell's his name, Ryan, and there, any movie with terrible rap music instantly goes down for me. <laughs> like, right then and there, we get a bunch of it, because they're making out and shit on the bed. And then he mentions that she has a birth, like, she has a birthmark that he likes, so like your birthmark, or something like that. I don't remember much of this movie, but it's such a forced line, I would not be surprised at all if that birthmark comes into play like later on in the movie it's it's so obvious that it's setting something up with that then we get the scene with heather talking to her parents and asking them about like am i adopted and stuff like and they say yeah like we got you in newt texas and like we took you out of a total shithole basically and then she gets pissed and she storms out and she's gonna head down there with her friends the dialogue's not good like nothing's interesting about any of this and then she just gets pissed off and runs away. And then the mom walks outside and she says, listen to me. And she warns her. And it sounds like she knows about the family or Leatherface or something like murderous. And she says, don't go down there. It's the last place you want to be. And like sinister music plays in. Why not just say, don't go down there. You're from a family of murdering maniacs. There you go. Done. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> I don't know. All the writing is god awful in this movie. It's so cringeworthy. The characters are all terrible. Like, not, if you can't tell already, this is going to be a rant. It's going to turn into one. <laughs> this is going to be like a Jeepers Creepers 3 video or a Return to Sleepaway Cam. Not as bad as that, but there's going to be just negatives all over the place. Like, of course, there's going to be some good stuff, but this is going to be... Don't be surprised because the characters all... I, I do not like them. Heather's the only one, and that's just because she's, she's tra attractive. Like, that's pretty much it. Even she isn't a, really a great, compelling character or anything. And you don't really need good characters in a slasher film or a Texas Chainsaw film. But that's why I don't consider a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the first movie, a slasher film. Like, I don't. It's not a slasher to me. Like, the body count's not high enough. It's just a thing all on its own. It's its own movie. These characters here, I don't care. Like, kill them. That's, like, all I'm rooting for here. Because none of them are good in any way. More terrible rap music, too. And then they stop and they pitch up. Pitch up? <laughs> they pick up a hitchhiker. First mistake. Because doesn't he rob their ass later? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember that. Great song. That's a, that's a positive right here. The whole inheritance thing, we see, we've seen this in a decent amount of movies. Somebody inherits something, a castle freak by a Stuart Gordon. They inherit some place from some relative they had no idea existed and they don't look into it at all they just go there <laughs> like i i never will understand that like if you hear that you had like a long lost relative that's leaving you a house you wouldn't think that's suspicious <laughs> like in the least bit and want to look into it first or like i get a private eye have him go talk to the guy for something like that not just like hop in a car and head down there like ooh, i'm a winner and <laughs> This is why they get murdered. The house looks really cool. That's that's a positive. Good to see the old guy who's in so many things, but the old guy from Hatchet, he was in that show Grounded for Life on Fox back in the 90s or early 2000s. Always good to see him. He's the like caretaker for the house. He gives her the papers, so then he just like leaves, I guess. <laughs> None of this makes sense at all. I told you, this is going to be a rant. Just like last night with the dentist, too. It was pretty much like a blind watch. This is pretty much the same for me. Like I said, I did not remember most of this. But just the whole thing. They, this beautiful mansion, like I said. It's a fucking mansion. It's not just a house. Great silverware. Like, So then why was this woman who left this behind to her part of a cannibalistic family like they couldn't afford food and shit <laughs> this whole script is terrible unless they reveal something later but i'm not going to believe it and i'm going to call it out as bullshit this house is ridiculous looking 
she's supposed to have come from this family. So if someone had this house in their possession and had all this money, yet never helped their family out with food, and that's why they had to resort to cannibalism and murder? <laughs> I don't know, man. There'll be bloopers, don't worry. Also, on the property, there's a graveyard, like, with a bunch of tombstones that say Sawyer and stuff on it. So, again, if she was such... This person was so big on the family, the Sawyers, they had all this money in a mansion and stuff like that. Why were they eating people? Oh, this is so bad. That hitchhiker, he robs them blind. <laughs> See, I totally remembered that part. Some of the ads are more entertaining than the movie. The best friend of Heather, Nikki, I think her name is? Yeah. I don't like her character either. She's terrible. She comes up, went in the grocery store, and just grabs uh, Ryan's dick. And then it's revealed and stuff that they fucked. And he cheated on Heather with her. I don't care about any of this. And he says that he had 18 kamikazes. I don't care if he had 50 fucking kamikazes, whatever the hell that is. I know they're drinks, but I don't drink that shit. Like, that's my stance on cheating. I don't care what mind state you're in. You still are making a choice. But it does have a good score. I like the score. The sound design is good. The cinematography. These are things that a movie of this budget should have. So... It's not really a positive that I can give it, but they're all they're all good. Then we have the the hitchhiker who's been robbing the place this whole time. Some good tension here, but it's, it's not great or anything. Then he finds this big ass key ring and a key, and he's trying to find what it opens. And he finds the basement, and there's a big ass door with a key. He opens it. There's a bunch of wine. He says, "What am I going to do with a bunch of wine? I don't know. You can drink it. I'm not a wine guy." I had wine once in my life. Never again. That's a story for another time. And then he finds his door that looks just like the door from the original, the, the famous slamming of the door after he knocks the shit out of the guy's head. Same thing here, and he's trying to get in there, and he can't. Uh, then Leatherface is revealed to be behind there, and he kills him. Now, again, like, the person who owns this house was keeping him down there and giving him scraps like they eat. Why not just put his ass up in one of those rooms? Like, <laughs> you picture Leatherface just chilling on a nice, comfortable bed. Maybe it would chill him out a bit. Maybe he wouldn't want to go murdering people as much if he had an actual room to stay in and not some dungeon. But then the group of them go into town, and the mayor knows her family, the Sawyers. And she said she inherited the place, and he knew that already. And he tries to take it off her hands. And she says, no, I don't want to sell it. I told you that goddamn birthmark... <laughs> was coming into play somehow because she's looking at a picture and then she pulls her down and there it is. So, oh, it's so telegraphed so early on in the movie. It's, it's, it's stupid when it's revealed here. So then one of the guys goes down looking for Daryl, the hitchhiker. Daryl's not like that. I've known Daryl for 11 seasons. He would never rob a place. And then he ends up getting chased by Leatherface up the stairs and it's a nice shot of in front of him as he's crawling up and you see him crawling towards you just like this. Uh, then he gets hooked in the back and dragged down the stairs. It's okay. Then Nikki, that bitchy girl who, you know, screwed uh, Heather's boyfriend, he comes into a barn and she's freaking out acting like there's something disgusting under this bucket. And he goes and lifts it up and it's a bottle of wine and two glasses for them and stuff. And then she strips down like, like who wrote this script? It's awful. I don't even want to know, really. I don't even want to look into it. It's terrible. I'll give it this also. The scene where she finds... Who is that even? Is that supposed to be who she inherited the house from? They never found the body? Then we see her go downstairs, and I like this usage of the sound design with the heart beating faster and faster, just like it would in that situation for anybody. And then no one's around, and then she walks in the kitchen, and you just see Leatherface for the first real time, and he's holding a severed hand, and he just clips off one of the fingers, and then the way it pans in on her to show the fear, very Fulci, Italian-esque kind of. And then she gets knocked out. All of that is done very, very well. And then the start of this next scene, right after that, is cool, because then you have the uh, flash of the camera sound repeated a few times. Even though it doesn't really make sense, because like, who's taking pictures of this? <laughs> but it's stylistically, it's, it's good. Leatherface's look in this, it's fine. I can't complain. It's nothing great. It's nothing bad. Middle of the road. Then we have the friend 
who gets put on the meat hook, which is just a staple of every movie in this series. But one thing that came to mind is it's unreal how people can make a fan film. And yes, this is a plug for uh, my buddy Steve Merlos, who directed uh, the Sawyer Massacre fan film. But how someone could do that and make a film that is better in every fucking way than a big budget sequel movie in a huge franchise. Like, if you guys haven't seen The Sawyer Massacre, check it out. It's on YouTube. It's a prequel to the original movie, fan film. It's better than this shit in every single way. Like, are you serious? Yeah, sometimes I just like to go heavy New York on you guys. The guy's kill is awesome, though. Like, he just takes, he's hanging on the meat hook, he takes the chainsaw, just chops him right in half, and the bottom hits the ground, it falls over. Like, all of that's good. Then Heather does the smart thing. While he, her buddy's being chopped in half, she gets the fuck out of there. <laughs> she starts running. And we get a good chase sequence with uh, Leatherface chasing her through the woods. Really cool scene when she hides in the cemetery. She hides in an actual grave and in a coffin. But then he realizes she's in there and he puts the chainsaw down and just starts revving it into the coffin and she's screaming and you see the POV of the chainsaw coming down like at her and she's moving out of the way. All of that's great. But then the, the, the people that are fucking each other behind the girl's back, they've been in this barn the whole time. <laughs> they don't hear a chainsaw going off the whole time. Come on, man. They distract him and... Leatherface starts going after the two of them, which, oh, God, just killed them. Like, they didn't hear this at all. <laughs> I don't know how. All right. <laughs> I'm not in real estate or anything like this. I don't deal with housing or anything. But if someone dies and leaves a house to somebody else, doesn't someone have to come and inspect the house? Like, the person, <laughs> like, kind of like a realtor who shows off houses, but... This isn't like trying to sell a house, it's an inheritance, but surely they gotta check the house out, right? Like, they'd find a big-ass door in the basement with a keyhole. They'd want to find that key and check what's in there, right? They'd find, a, like, a little dungeon with a door with food by it, with Leatherface behind it, right? Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Then, of course, like in so many of these movies, Heather comes in with the van, and the three of them get in it, and he's driving, uh whatever the hell his name is, he's driving and, like usual, drives and crashes while they're being chased by Leatherface, like, worse driving than an Asian. So they think they escaped, they go through the gate, and they just barely make it, and he already chainsawed the shit out of the car, and they end up flipping and f crashing into a tree. So, <laughs> two crashes. I mean, I know there's a lot going on right now, and she's got a lot on her mind, Heather, but... First thing that didn't come to mind to her was what the hell were you two doing alone together for all this time? I don't know about that. I Even in this type of situation, that question would hit my head at least immediately. Yeah, this video is getting butchered and edited all over the place. Worse than the singer from that 80s band who had the song You Spin Me Right Round, the way that he destroyed his face with all the work he got done, and this is how he looks now. <laughs> That's what's happening with the editing. And then we go to a fucking carnival, like, and Leatherface is chasing Heather through the carnival. All the people there are freaking out, like, really? Is this really where we're going? She's grabbing on a Ferris wheel, and it's picking her up to take her out of his, like, reach with the chase. Oh, get the hell out of here. So then she comes down the other side, because obviously what goes up is coming down. And then the sheriff deputy, who has a thing for her. Shows up, it says, drop the saw, and he throws it, and it's such, it's so obvious. Like, that's the only thing so far that I noticed that was, like, this was 3D shot right here. With the saw coming right at the screen. It doesn't look good. <laughs> like, it doesn't. I'm sure it might in 3D. You still wearing those glasses? Good. And then Leatherface just runs off into the night. <laughs> and there's, there's still, like, 40 minutes left. Oh, this is god-awful. Then we're at the police station for a little bit with Sheriff Hooper. How on the nose is that reference? I don't know, man. <laughs> this is just not good in any way. But they're talking, and then it's a little, like, kind of flirtation going on between Heather and the stupid sheriff deputy. And let's just say another thing. That opening scene, as cool as it is, one, because Bill Mosley, who is one of the few fucking positives with this movie and he's in it for like three minutes the wig that uh the actor uh the guy who plays the sheriff the wig that he was wearing it looks so bad 
in the opening of this movie. I was forgot to say something because now you see him without it, and it's just like whoa, like yeah, that was not good, <laughs> not a good wig. Then we get a dumb conversation between the sheriff and the mayor. And they both were there at the beginning. They both kept it all a secret, but yet there's, like, a picture of them, like, by the Burt house in a newspaper. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I, why would you want to be associated with that in any way publicly? Like, just in case, like, later on, that shit comes to bite you in the ass. So they end up having, like, a power struggle. And the mayor calls all the shots, apparently. The sheriff has the same as back in, this, back in the day when they burnt the house down. So he didn't want to do that, the sheriff. He wanted a peaceful solution to all this and then the mob and the mayor was there they burnt the house down he's just letting him again like tell this other uh cop to go into the house and just risk his life and the sheriff saying it's a mistake like just get him out of there we think that sawyer's still alive but then of course the cop who's searching the house gets killed and he has it on his phone to show the sheriff and uh the sh and the mayor what's going on and then he gets a pretty cool death scene. He gets, like, axed up, like, a whole bunch in the side. You don't see much of it, but there's a nice top-down shot. Good blood. I mean, it's not great kills in this movie. We also get a long, drawn-out exposition scene where you just see Heather reading the newspaper of recounting the whole story of the first movie, and then everything happened since when the house was burnt down, and then the child that she is was assumed dead. It's too much exhibition and stuff that's so obvious. We know all this already. Then we have an epic turn of events when <laughs> Heather finds out from looking at the picture that the mayor was there and then she finds out that her parents were there. And then she calls up. So they knew this whole time. They didn't say anything to them. Come on, man. And then the same with the guy, the realtor, old dude from the Hatchet movie. He didn't say anything either. Like, seriously? <laughs> oh, this is this is really bad. I'm suffering right now. Leatherface, though, when he's cutting the face off of the cop and he's pulling it off and stuff, all that looks really good. This guy has the balls <laughs> to tell her when she says, why didn't you tell me that, that like, why did you let us stay in this house, knowing all of this and knowing he was alive? And he says, "You, I told you to read the letter from Verna. You didn't read the letter? Are you goddamn kidding me? That's a letter-worthy thing? No, that's something you pull her aside immediately and you tell her, listen, there's someone in this house. <laughs> Read the letter. She laid it all out. All he said is just casually, oh, don't forget to read the letter and, uh, and let him go. I really don't like how they're trying to humanize Leatherface so much. That they're trying to make you feel for him just so we get that abysmally stupid line later on. Throws his chainsaw and says, like, here you go, cuz, or something. That terrible line. All of a sudden, she's fine being a murderous Sawyer. Like, oh, my God. And the mayor turns out to be the father of the sheriff deputy. And he, for some reason, <laughs> takes Heather, ties her up. The mayor and him, like, just want to kill her because she's a Sawyer. Because they hate old Sawyers. And... None of this is good. Like, this is so awful in every way. All of this is to just make us look at Leatherface as like a hero, and he's not a hero. He killed bad people. Then we get the unreal reveal. I'm surprised I said that shit on the first try. <laughs> that Leatherface is the cousin of Heather, and he's about to chainsaw her up, and then she pulls and shows her birthmark. But you got the mayor there, his son, they're beating the crap out of Leatherface. Heather murders someone, <laughs> like in cold blood. Yeah, he's trying to hurt Leatherface, but so what? She's ready to commit murder now, just because she found out she's from a murderous family. We just get this fantastic fucking lie. Do your thing, cousin. Are you goddamn kidding me? <laughs> What type of line is that? This is so unreal and how terrible this movie is. Then, not only does she murder someone and throw the chainsaw at Leatherface, then when the sheriff shows up to try to shoot Leatherface, she's screaming, don't shoot. Now, Leatherface just means everything to her. Are you serious? And, and the, he doesn't shoot. The, the, the fucking sheriff just says, clean this shit up. And he walks away. 
And then she just walks back to the house with leather. Fi- <laughs> I can't even finish this. And like, no, it's it's done. But this is this is so bad. Like, oh, I'm sorry for the rant, guys, but this is so atrocious. This movie, I'm like, <laughs> I will never watch this again. Like, they, there are a few good things here and there. The kills look all right, but nothing great. Heather's character was good until they just completely twist her character around here at the end. All of that is just awful. The writing is terrible. The cinematography, the some shots are good. This is awful. This movie sucks. <laughs> so, can't wait to do the beginning later, because that movie is like the original compared to this. Like, it, I don't care for the beginning too much, but there's it, this is it's infinitely better than this movie. Yeah, so that guy couldn't tell her and warn her about any of this. She reads the letter at the end and she that was her body early early on. So this bitch just died and they kept the body there, but they were able to reach her about the house like <laughs> Come on, man. And the writing is atrocious. It's the worst part of this movie, is the writing. It, it is so bad in every way. And, like, this isn't even, call it what you want at this point, a review, a rant, a, just, for me, it's just suffering on camera. <laughs> it's exactly what this is. She reads that whole letter, though, we said, and it says all of this. It says your real name, or her real name is Edith Rose Sawyer. And that Jedediah, her cousin, lives in the basement. <laughs> And he'll protect you for the rest of your life. Not according to the first hour and something of this movie until he sees the friggin' thing. But she, this guy read this letter and he didn't say a word about any of this. That That is so unbelievable. And the rest of it, she just goes back to the house. He shuts his door. He still chooses to live in a dungeon <laughs> instead of living in a nice-ass room. This is a mansion. He could have, like, his pimp head. Nope, he's cool, like, eating fucking, like, chicken bones and stuff. And, of course, there's a terrible post credit scene when Heather is at the house and her parents who raised her, non-biological parents, come to visit. And they want to mess with her and the inheritance and try to screw her out of money. And then Leatherface comes out of the door rubbing his chainsaw. Get the hell out of there. This movie sucks. I'll talk to you guys later. But yeah, there's a graveyard. <laughs> there is. And this too. On the... <laughs> Why can't I say that? Then the friend Nikki, the, the bitchy girl who screwed Daryl. Not Daryl. And we get a good chase sequence with uh, Leatherface chasing her through the woods, out, out of the house, through the woods, and over the meadow, through the woods, to grandma's this house we go. And then they end up flipping in the ditch. It's not a ditch at all. And then, of course, the guy's killed. The cop. In a good way. <laughs> It's a good way to get killed. Of course, the cop searching the house, he's streaming it on his... He's not streaming, but... Him, though, uh, 